so after Embracer Group acquired many Square Enix Western Studios and IPs, Melanie Mack gave her commentary in a video she uploaded earlier this week. Who is Melanie Mack? She is a gaming influencer. She had previously been working for GameStop for a number of years as a personality. She is also a huge Tomb Raider fan and makes it abundantly clear that she is not a fan of the Square Enix era of Tomb Raider. She is more of a fan of the classic games and has insisted that that era of Tomb Raider was better, even though the sales have suggested otherwise. So here we go. She has a lot to say. And so do I. Uh, let me go ahead and get to today's topic. I want to, y'all know I like talking about Tomb Raider. And this is something that is constantly, constantly being talked about because Square Enix wasn't happy with the reboot trilogy's sales. They didn't meet expectations, and everyone thought they were so unreasonable for that because, I mean, the game sold a lot of units. Okay, what she is referring to is that when a new Tomb Raider game was out in its first week and it would sell like 3 or 4 million copies, the CEO of Square Enix would say that it failed to meet sales expectations. This is what really happened on a couple of occasions, but I feel this is a gross overreaction from Square Enix. Tomb Raider is not known to being this holiday must-play game like Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed. Tomb Raider is more of an evergreen series where, no matter it's available a year from now, two years from now, or even longer, the game still sells at a desirable pace. I get that people see Lara Croft like Mario, but she's more like a notch below Mario when it comes to marketability. But none of this is a bad thing by any means. Tomb Raider has still been a high-selling franchise, even more so thanks to Square Enix's support, but if Square Enix was expecting the series to sell like a Mario game right out the gate, then they played themselves. No question about it. Resume. There's so much more to it than just that. I've been trying to say this. Um, at first, you know, I was like, oh yeah, wow, why are they not happy? That's a lot of units. I remember when uh, the rebooted game sold a crap ton. But here's the thing. <laughs> Each game had like a hundred million dollar plus budgets. So if a game has a high budget, then there's no way for that game to make a profit? I mean, it's harder for the game to make a profit, but when you talk about a series like Tomb Raider, 100 million dollars is not too high a budget for that. There are factors that determine whether or not 100 million dollars is too high a budget, and I've yet to see anything that suggests it's too much money for a mainline Tomb Raider game. If it's a well-known IP, backed by a AAA developer, and they finish the game on time, then that's a good recipe for a successful game. If this game had to be delayed once or twice, then you have to count making back the costs from having to pay all those workers extra. The Tomb Raider game from 2013 was actually supposed to be out in fall 2012, but came out February 2013. It's not like there was an indefinite delay like any of those highly anticipated Final Fantasy games. It's like a miracle nowadays for game developers to finish a game in three years. $100 million is also just $6 million more than the budget of the original Tomb Raider movie, and that was a big box office success, and now you're pitching a smaller audience to pay more money for the product, and 14.5 million people up to this point did so. So I don't know where she bases this budget problem from. Maybe she can clarify. And then when you factor in the fact that so many, like, not even that long after release, at least for Rise and Shadow, they went on sale. Um, they were for dirt cheap at some, po at some points. Uh, they were giving the games away at some points. Aren't you a gamer, Maloney? Every developer has a sale, even for games, that released not too long ago. Final Fantasy VII Remake was on sale multiple times. Kingdom Hearts III was on sale multiple times. Just Cause 4 was on sale multiple times. That's not always an indication that the game is struggling to sell well. The game can sell well, and then during a point in which there's another anticipated release or a season, where game sales are hot, they drop the price in hopes the trend of sales continue. All the big developers and publishers do this, Capcom, Ubisoft, Namco, Sega, CD Projekt Red, Sony, Microsoft, it doesn't just happen to Tomb Raider. So... Yeah, if you really do like a comparison and people want to act like, oh, Crystal Dynamics saved Tomb Raider, blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, ever since Crystal Dynamics got a hold of the series with Legend, the Legend trilogy sold the worst out of any era. It sold terribly, okay? I want to say, um, man, this is just going off memory, but I don't even think Legend was able to meet what 
Angel Darkness sold. And Angel Darkness is the reason why Core Design lost uh, Tomb Raider. So, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong with that. This is not true. Tomb Raider Legends sold 6 million copies, while Angel of Darkness sold just 2.5 million copies. Angel of Darkness was critically panned, and it had a bizarre development history. Tomb Raider Legend was available on more consoles, but the reviews were also better overall, so more people were more willing to purchase it. I can't remember, but I know if, if it was sold better, it wasn't that much. Um, but yeah, the, the Legend trilogy sold terribly. And so then the rebooted trilogy sold a lot more and they actually the numbers look good but when you got games that are that are freaking 100 million plus dollar budgets you compare that to something like the classics the originals which obviously newer games are going to have bigger budgets because there's a lot more that goes into it but just saying people want to act like crystal dynamic saved tomb raider and is, and is tomb raider is the most successful it's ever been like bro the old the classic tomb raider games have like the equivalent with inflation, $1 million budgets, okay? $1 million, just one. Well, that is like, well, that's literally one one hundredth of the budget that the games have now. And when you factor in comparable sales, they were pretty close. I mean, I want to say the first uh, of the rebooted games is the only game that has outsold Tomb Raider 1 and 2, uh, or at least really close. Care to tell us where you have got this information from? Because to my resources, Tomb Raider 1 and 2 have not sold more than Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Both of those games have roughly sold 7 to 8 million copies, which is amazing for being in the fifth generation, but from where I'm looking online, they have not sold more than Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'd assume that being a big Tomb Raider fan, that you would know how many copies each game actually sold. So, yeah. I mean, dude, back in the day with the classics, uh, and especially like the the employees were also getting like uh percentages uh based on success like dude some of them were on the original dev team were able to just retire and live it up because they made so much money on the original games i don't see what this has to do with it the original core design team was smaller and they made a lot of money simply because they pumped out a new tomb raider game each year and other 3d games before that so let's stop acting like Chris Dynamics is the hero of Tomb Raider here. Now, something else is that, you know, it's just like, in my opinion, this is what happens when you take a property like Tomb Raider that was, you know, created in British hands, it had that charm to it, and you give it to an American studio and they Americanize and Hollywoodize it and make it so mainstream Hollywood feeling. It almost seems like she never wanted Tomb Raider to be successful. Because before the first Tomb Raider movie, studios were very reluctant with making movie adaptations of video games. Super Mario Bros. and Street Fighter were terrible. Mortal Kombat's first movie was successful, but the sequel fell off the rails. And then comes this concept of a woman-led adventure with tons of action, and the stars aligned to make that into a movie. Casuals enjoyed it as did gamers. You can't just expect games to get by with no story nowadays. You need one to help consumers enjoy it more. Uh, it, it changes the entire essence of it and add these huge big budgets just for these fancy cutscenes that are not necessary. I've been saying this for years and I'm finally feeling somewhat heard now. Wait a second, cutscenes? What is wrong with cutscenes? If the cutscenes were the problem then they'd change them. I can't believe she's complaining about the cost of cutscene. She just seems desperate to discredit these recent games because they apparently can do no right. I'd bet if the cutscenes were low budget, then her argument would be that the games aren't quality enough. Oh, the lighting is awful, it looks like I'm playing an asset flip game on Steam, they'd look better if they were pre-rendered. Instead, they look too good, so that's a problem because they must cost a lot to make. Like, have mercy Melanie. You don't have to pour in $100 million budgets into these games let tomb raider be more uh more simple let tomb raider be more what it was originally created to be focus on the gameplay stop putting so much money in these stupid over dramatic cutscenes that most people in the fan base don't like anyway because it's not tomb raider was never supposed to be a dramatic story there is an easy way to deal with that you can have a simple tomb raider just skip the cutscenes skip the dialogue Go right into the gameplay, if you feel like it. Cutscenes and story seem like a very silly nitpick. 
having cut scenes there and having the option to skip them is the best of both worlds. You can skip them if you want, and it doesn't take away the story experience for those that want to enjoy them. It seems like she's not aware that there are other people that love Tomb Raider's stories and cut scenes. Why does it seem like we have to remove major parts of the game just so she can feel better? Personally, I honestly think she just hates everything about Square Enix's Tomb Raider because it's not classic Tomb Raider. Like when you watch one of her older streams playing these games, do you ever see her go this game is too high quality for me? No. In fact those things practically never crossed her mind. She actually enjoyed playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here's the description of her video. Hi everyone. I can finally upload this, and I am super excited. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Gamma Play and my thoughts. I played the first 4 hours of the game, but condensed it to 30 minutes of Gamma Play with no cutscenes or spoilers. I am so blown away and obsessed with how well Lara Croft is portrayed, this is amazing. It seems like she enjoyed the story. So what happened? Why does she suddenly hate this game? Was she not being genuine? What the hell? Ex until Angel of Darkness rolled around and even then I didn't like that. So let me go ahead and get into the article before I just like go on the biggest tangent imaginable. Uh, the gamer says, because, I mean, obviously, they sold Tomb Raider for 100... I mean, I just Montreal and Crystal Dynamics, so that's not even just Tomb Raider. But just Tomb Raider alone being sold for only $300 million is, like, insulting, in a way. It's so dirt cheap for, for one of the most iconic franchises of all time. But there's a reason for it. There is a, there's a legit reason for it, because it hasn't been performing because of how it's been handled. So this is practically her only argument as to why all three games flopped, because their budgets were too high. At least we know what these budgets were, because Square Enix is too reluctant to show us the budgets on games like Final Fantasy VII Remake which was in development since the PS2, Final Fantasy XV which was in development since the mid-2000s, and Kingdom Hearts III which had a development time of at least six years. Believe it or not, as much as the Tomb Raider games are known for providing a grand, immersive experience, Square Enix's own games are even bigger in scope, in length, in number of people involved, so I have to think the budgets are much bigger too. So those three games I mentioned, you put all their development times together, and you get at least 31 years of game development as a whole, and they were all worked on at the same time. With Tomb Raider, they managed to finish three games in nine years and sell way more copies. So, I have no clue what Melanie is talking about here. I am going to reserve my judgment on why it was just a $300 million transaction. I had to think it had more to do with Embracer and their finances rather than the company's value and performance. Because as I said before, if Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo wanted to buy those studios, they would have wanted to spend much more for them, and Square Enix would have commanded far more money. But there's a good chance the studios didn't want that. All right. So Square Enix just doesn't want to spend money on AAA games anymore, yeah. Right, because Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Kingdom Hearts, that's nothing but cheap, low-quality indie stuff. I I would love it if Tomb Raider did not feel AAA anymore. Don't let Tomb Raider be AAA anymore. Let it feel like almost somewhat indie and focus on... Take away all those fancy cutscenes, let drop cutscenes in for a reward, take away the realistic art style and feel of it let tomb raider be tomb raider again stylized art no need for fancy mocaps no need for all this realism not needed they could make tomb raider for a fraction of the budget and make it a lot better and more fun stick to the old formula sticking to the old formula is why idos and crystal dynamics were up for sale to begin with people were outgrowing the jimmy neutron graphics and disproportionate character models that doesn't appeal to that many people anymore. When the PS1 was the platform to support, that was fine, because of the limitations, but then once we are midway into the PS3, it just looks dated, and Square Enix rightfully felt like they had to make changes. And there is nothing unusual about that. Legend of Zelda, Sonic the Hedgehog, Castlevania, Resident Evil, it's not uncommon to see established franchises that have their formulas, quote changed, and it fares better for them. I was tired of Link in a green elf costume and having the same gameplay since Ocarina of Time. And let's be honest, if Tomb Raider were to go indie, she would not buy it. There are indie quality games like Lara Croft and The Guardian of Light that she could play, but for some reason, that's not enough. 
Square Enix has just sold three of its biggest studios. Crystal Dynamics, Idis Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal have all been sold to Embracer Group for the relatively low price of $300 million in cold hard cash. For the makers of AAA blockbusters like Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Guardians of the Galaxy, that seems like a seriously small amount. And yet, Square Enix seems happy to divest itself of the prestigious studios in the name of future profitability. I really don't blame them. Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad broke down the numbers for us. The profit margins on running Crystal Dynamics and Idis Montreal were far lower than Square Enix's other studios. Crystal Dynamics had an operating profit margin of 3.6%. Or 3 through 6, is that right? 3.6%. Okay, while Idis Montreal squeaked by with just 0.65% in 2021. Okay, so let's stop pretending like, oh, all these, all these sales. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your sales are. It's all about return on investment. If the investment is colossal, then sales numbers don't mean crap if they're not pulling in enough revenue i mean they're barely breaking even barely over breaking even at this point of course she leaves some very important details out but of course we can't give any of these evil woke american companies the benefit of the doubt crystal dynamics have not been working on tomb raider since they finished up with rise of the tomb raider in 2015 and that's a pretty long time to be away from that they then worked on marvel avengers and by no means was that their decision it was the higher-ups in Square that told them their next project was Avengers, because of course they want more Disney games. Eidos has not been working on Deus Ex since 2017 they were in charge of the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Square Enix told them, no we're no longer going to make Deus Ex games, here's what you're working on next. But Tomb Raider and Crystal Dynamics are supposed to be responsible for these losses how? Square Enix overall had an operating profit of 14.2% last year, meaning the sold studios were vastly underperforming compared to other parts of the company. There's various divisions and studios within Square Enix, and from that I have researched, that 14.2% profit has largely to do with Final Fantasy XIV and their mobile games divisions. Of course, you're not going to bring up their console RPG games that lost them hundreds of millions. Okay, uh, Daniel says Daniel says it's worth noting that these expectations are always backed by something tangible, and in Square Enix's case, it's the cost associated with running the studio plus developing the game. In layman's terms, they spent too much and got a low return. <laughs> Thank you. I've been trying to say this, and I don't know why. I don't even know why. Like I've been trying to say this for like. Again, how does this correlate to Tomb Raider specifically? How are you so sure it's not because working alongside Disney's IP is not the problem? Because anything associated with Disney has gotten much more expensive. They are shifting away from middle-class consumers with families, and they're now gearing towards upper-class consumers and childless couples. This is apparent in their parks, their products, and even when it comes to corporate partnerships, they want more money. All this tells me is that Square Enix was very stubborn when not thinking about the ramifications that come with working with Disney. Imagine that, we have this based lady that opposes everything woke, and Disney is that last company she's blaming in this situation. Years. When people talk about the sales of Tomb Raider, and I'm like, bro, they're spending $100 million or more per game right now. It's absurd. It's like, uh, come on, this is simple math. Once again, she completely ignores the Marvel games. But this is less about Idis Montreal or Crystal Dynamics underperforming and more about the fact that these studios just make expensive games and expensive games can sometimes take years to recoup their initial investments if they ever do at all. Yes, that's why stop making the game so stupid expensive. At the end of the day, when you're playing something like Tomb Raider, think of like the classic games, man. The focus was gameplay. The focus was the dynamic platforming that didn't have auto grab and that didn't have shiny ledges telling you where to go and that didn't have your character telling you what to do next. It but I thought she wanted simplicity. Now having simple controls and easy navigation isn't good? I remember playing WWE 2K19. And in order to play a ladder match, you have to stand up and climb a ladder and obtain a championship belt or briefcase off the hook. To fans that buy 
and play the game every year, it probably doesn't concern them as much, but when I thought about it, it was like right bumper to hold the ladder, A to stand the ladder up, left bumper to climb the ladder, and then like A again, to grab for the briefcase. It shouldn't be that complex for an objective. It's like why do I need that same convolution when grabbing for a ledge? This is why Assassin's Creed became very popular was because the controls got simpler and more people who didn't care to learn the game could actually enjoy themselves without figuring out what buttons they need to press to climb a building or run or stay out of harm's way. I don't even know why she's bringing this argument up to be honest. She wants to have problems with grabbing ledges and climbing apparently. It was a true adventure, okay? It was a difficult game. Uh, they were difficult games in, in the fact that you actually had to use your brain, even just, just platforming. You were looking at stuff like, okay, so I got to do a running jump for this. Then I got to jump here, do a short jump here, um, then do uh, a flip here because the ground isn't solid, and then grab the ledge here. And there's just so much calculating that went into it. And so the game, th what the selling point was for the games were the actual gameplay. You wanted to experience it. And that's the thing about the classic games is that you can watch someone else play it, but ultimately the, the, the most fun lies in experiencing it because it was the substance was in the gameplay itself. I completely understand that challenging games that require skill have their appeal, but if you have a fan base that wants to enjoy a story, why stop them? Why does it have to feel like you're playing an eSport? Games today are capable of much more than just tests of patience, skill and precision. There are a broad number of consumers that like movies and cinematic, and they matter too, and there's nothing wrong with trying to satisfy them because they are such a broad of an audience. Now whenever you have all of your substance and only cutscenes, then you don't even really have to play it. You can watch other people play it. You can say the same thing about the early Tomb Raider games. I've watched somebody speedrun the first game and beat it in less than an hour. So far I have yet to see one compelling argument from her. I don't expect to get it. I just, it, it, and the thing is, is classic Tomb Raiders still had good cutscenes for their time, but they were just like, they were thrown in as a reward. They weren't just constant. And the way that the rebooted games, it's just constant cutscenes, constant over dramatic stuff, wanting you to feel sorry for Lara Croft, all this fancy mocap, all this stuff that's just unnecessary. It's an interactive movie. Uh-huh. You were saying these exact same things when you first played them. You want and done. You play it, you're done with it type thing. Um, you can just get the experience of the rebooted games simply by watching. That's it. Um, you can get the experience of the classic games by watching. That's it. If consumers don't want to have to buy the PS1 games and go through all the torture factories to see the ending, they can watch you play them, and you have. Because when you factor in the actual gameplay itself is, I mean, unless you just really love the combat of it, which to me I feel like was the worst part of it, um, then you're not even really going to have much to play because, like, auto grab. You don't really have to think with the traversal. You don't have to think with the puzzles either. Shadow a little bit, but even then, they're there. They're just it's an it's plays itself essentially. It's just it, it's 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 a walking simulator that <laughs> that that just gives you cutscenes to watch. Welcome to 2022, where video games have all turned into interactive movies. So this is what happens. You pay all this money. And you don't sell that well. Or you sell a lot, but you can't make up for it because it's just so much money that you're pouring into it. Compared to the budget of the movies, which last only 90 minutes or so, $100 million is really reasonable. When the gameplay isn't even, doesn't even have the substance that the classic games did, not even close. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, cost between $110 and $135 million to produce and market, making it one of the most ex expensive games ever made. Really? I guess of all the known budgets, that's true. By the time Chris Dynamics celebrated the Tomb Raider franchise's 25th anniversary, Shadow of the Tomb Raider had sold close to 9 million units, but it took almost three years to get there. 
Deus Ex Mankind Divided had a similar story. It cost roughly 70 million CAD to produce Mankind Divided in 2016 and likely many millions more to advertise it. But the game sales were initially disappointing to Square Enix, as is often the case with its Western games. By 2022, however, total sales for Mankind Divided and Human Revolution totaled $12 million, or 12 million cal or no, that's the sale copies. Okay. According to Embracer Group's numbers, those are strong sales, but it took over half a decade for Deus Ex to get there, and thus the risk of bankrolling future entries just isn't worthwhile. You know, yeah, I think I really set it up. I don't have to read this whole thing, but this is the problem with a lot of Western games. When you compare Western and Eastern games, okay, like Japan makes fun freaking games, dude. They, first of all, they don't always bow to the woke stuff. I fail to see what this topic has to do with Tomb Raider, but if we're in the business of calling companies woke, what's the wokest company on earth right now? Secondly, they they actually make fun games, they make stylized characters, not everything has all this expensive uh, mocap and Hollywood-esque realism. Not Square Enix, not Capcom, not Namco, not Sony. There are some smaller Japanese companies that develop and publish fun games like Level 5, Marvelous, and Nicholas, but if they had the money to go the quote Hollywood route, they certainly would. They certainly aren't happy living on the edge and having fiscal limitations for each of their games. In terms of graphics, storytelling, localization, etc. Okay. And their games are just, they, they fully embrace when they're over the top and they're just fun. Yes, partnering with Disney every chance you get is fun. So, there's a reason why Square Enix's Eastern properties were doing better than their Western ones. We need- Please show us. Because there are many indicators that disprove it. How can you spend 31 man years on these three games alone and say they've made more money with fewer copies sold than Tomb Raider? We need Western studios to stop all trying to be Hollywood experiences Right? It's Crystal Dynamics' fault that a Japanese company gave them $100 million to make a Tomb Raider game. They can do no right. And be fun again, please, for the love of freaking heck. Also, I wish that Tomb Raider wasn't in Western hands in general. Like, or in, in American hands in general, I should say. Tomb Raider just isn't supposed to be. Tomb Raider needs to be in, like, British hands again. I really wish it could be, but... I mean, at the very least, some sort of European hands. It just doesn't... I don't like the Hollywood-esque Tomb Raider feel. I don't like it. Didn't like it with the movies. Now, you know, as much as I did like the movies for what they were and some elements of them, um, I feel like Tomb Raider... That's what made Tomb Raider go downhill after the first Tomb Raider movie. Period. Period. Tomb Raider was so freaking perfect before then. Okay? Okay. I'm certain that if Core Design had all the time and resources in the world, that they'd add a meaty story to their early Tomb Raider games. And it was when Hollywood got a hold of it that things started going downhill. That's when they started adding the overdramatic stories with Lara Croft's dad. That's when they started shoehorning that, so they changed Lara Croft's backstory from being like a, uh, you know, it's, it's American hands that did that. It really is. Right, because Japan has never tried to add Hollywood elements to gaming before. It's apparently okay when Japan does it and wants the Disney IPs. When Capcom wants to make a crossover fighting game, when countless mobile companies make Disney games that only 1 million people download, when Sakurai wants Sara and his product for no other reason than to wet his own cock, yeah, that's all just peachy. Obviously, I love America, I'm proud to be an American, but dude, I don't like how they make games. Um, don't like what they do with game properties right now. For the most part, with some exceptions. But don't like the Hollywood focus. Don't like it. Um, and that's what killed Tomb Raider for me, is ever since uh, it fell into fell victim of, of trying to be a Hollywood experience um, with the movies. And ever since then, so it's sad. That's a sad thing about something that's so charming and great and, and indie feeling that gets mainstream, you know? And it's only gotten worse ever since, so... Yep, that Hollywood rub, it just made Tomb Raider more popular and more in demand, and that's apparently bad. All the guest game appearances and film and shows. That's all bad. 
I guess it's only going to be good when Lara increases her cup and lip sizes right. A lot of people get this wrong. The more recent version of Lara Croft is not a product of wokeism. SJWs did not give her the generic appearance she has now. This decision to go in this direction was made shortly after Square Enix acquired Eidos in 2010, as a matter of fact. Because of course, something wasn't working. But yeah, this is basically the end of her rant. But it's just so weird how you can go back to her videos where she talks about the reboot Tomb Raider games and seems like she's had fun with them and now it's a complete 180. Nothing redeeming, waste of money, dead in the water, good for nothing, just complete trailer trash. And I feel that her hate for wokeism possibly played a part in her changing her stance on them. Before Donald Trump was president, he was a well-loved celebrity like Gordon Ramsay with a big personality and was good at managing companies. And then one thing changes and suddenly people hate him simply because he supports people, by that I mean middle-class Americans, that the other side doesn't like. It seems like the same thing with Lara Croft from anti-SJW gamers. They make one mistake and suddenly they're completely irredeemable. Instead of Orange Man Bad it's Reboot Woman Bad. But this is the end of the video so let me know what you think.